Hey everyone, it's Ivan, Kipatra.com, and recently I was back east, had the good fortune stopping by Q, talking with my buddy Nick, one of the amazing engineers over there, and he ran me through their 556 Honey Badger. I'm Nick Schaefer, Director of Engineering, and today we're going to talk about Honey Badger 556. As you know, the original Honey Badger is designed around 300 blackout. We've had a lot of demand for a 556 version, and this is how we made it happen. What we set out to build was the shortest, lightest, reliable 556 gun we could in a Honey Badger package. The difference between 300 blackout and 556 is vast from a cartridge power and ease of loading standpoint, and also making short barreled 556's functional reliability is a challenge. So this is what we put together to solve all those problems. So just like our 300 blackout Honey Badger, we use the same receiver set, we have the same stock, stock based setup and receiver extension. Being 5.56, we have a longer barrel. This is a 9.69, one in five, 5.56. 5 uh, new gas block, same basic system, and a modified recoil system based on our two-piece Honey Badger carrier, a uh, recent addition to the Honey Badger line. And that's how we pull this all together to make this five pound 5.56. 5 so why didn't we just do this six years ago? Uh, because 5.56 doesn't work very well in the shortest PDW system on the market. When you take everything and scrunch it into this short receiver extension, as we did for the 300 blackout, we eliminated the buffer system. And what we introduced then in 5.56 is a significant amount of bolt bounce, significant enough that you'll have trouble, not always, but some trouble getting various ammo specs to run in 5.56, especially when we switch between super, or between low power, and high power rounds, and even more so when we switch from unsuppressed to suppressed. Since we like little things that are suppressed, we had to make stuff work short barreled, light ammo, heavy ammo, unsuppressed, suppressed. That was a, a big challenge and one we had to really revamp the recoil system in order to accomplish. And basically the way we did that is we created the two-piece bolt carrier that allowed us to create a back end of that carrier, or we call the ass end of the carrier, that is creating a sliding mass for mitigating bolt bounce. So there I was. <laughs> now, uh, how did we get here and why in the backwards story of the two-piece carrier slash 556 Honey Badger and then even the boombox development really uh, begins here. One morning, we weren't allowed to go to work because of COVID and uh, we couldn't build any guns because of COVID and we couldn't sell anything because of COVID. We couldn't get enough freaking bolt carriers because of COVID because uh, everybody in the whole country wanted every bolt carrier all the time. And Honey Badger carriers are special. So a special carrier was really hard to get. And a Honey Badger carrier is really very similar to a mil spec, but the back end is cut off enough to accommodate the spring seat for the, for the small diameter spring. Couldn't get them. Like, Nobody would give them to you for any amount of money. They told us it would be like two years we'll get a Honey Badger carrier again. So we cried about it for a minute. We laughed a little and then we designed the two-piece bolt carrier group. So this is really a project that begins with how do we get carriers so we can make some guns. Um, we, Mitch and I, for the most part, sat at the bar at his apartment because we couldn't go to work. And we talked through how we would make a bolt carrier group if we had to make it on a traditional machine. And we're like, hey, if we just redesign this thing to be made like we make everything else, instead of having to go to the big major carrier manufacturers, we could solve two problems. One, we could get them. Two, they'd actually be good quality. Because as soon as we start branching out from those popular and good quality carrier manufacturers, you get into a whole bunch of crap. That probably works fine in your 16 inch CAR, but there's no chance it's gonna work in a in a seven inch honey badger and 300 blackout sub or in a 9.69 inch 5.56. Just not enough, not enough uh, quality in that carrier and the carry over its dimensions to get any function out of those carriers. So that's a lot of, that's a lot of me saying carriers many times in a row. Um, what we ended up with was this system. This system is a two piece carrier where all of the important stuff is in the front end that is the pads that it runs on, all of your traditional ground surfaces, the gas ring surfaces, the gas keyhole, the camp in. 
All of that is encompassed in the front part of the carrier and then because it is short, it can now be made on a more modern turn mill machine all in one operation. So piece of bar goes in one end, carrier front ends come out the other end. That was the main goal. From there, we make the back or the ass end uh, is basically reconfigurable to whatever you want it to be. We make a standard length one. That's the one we sell as an accessory for your AR-15. We make one that's a bit shorter for our current Honey Badger recoil system. And then now we make this guy, which is a sliding mass contained Maraca uh, traditional bumper style ass end that allows us to run more re reliably in a fast feeding system like the 556. Um, mill spec bolt still applies, cam pin, gas key, all that stuff is still mill spec stuff, high quality mill spec stuff, but just that. But we can reconfigure this in those different lengths. And in addition, we can reconfigure it in an extra long length where we can run, say, 308 in like a boombox type flat platform. All right, our traditional system really relies on the difficulty or relative difficulty of pushing five, uh, 300 blackout rounds out of the magazine. They load a bit slower than 5.56. That slows down the bolt, keeps it from bouncing uh, too much to come out of battery. That allows you to squeeze a whole bunch of stuff real short. Now to, to mitigate that bolt bounce in 5.56, we have to figure out a way to introduce some sliding mass, which is what is inside your buffer, right? Your traditional buffer has some number or configuration of weights that creates a timing secondary impact to mitigate the bolt bounce or the rebound as the bolt wants to bounce back open after going into battery. We don't have a lot of room. We have to do that in a much shorter length. So we figured it out actually three or four different ways. We did it with a singular exterior weight with up to three exterior weights with rubber bumpers in between those weights. All of those systems actually work pretty good to mitigate bolt bounce but they are timing based systems. The, uh, what we settled on, however, let us also have a bumper and the bumper does another thing for you. It helps out. So this is a hollow bolt carrier, not just in this cylinder section, but also up in the middle here. And it is filled full of small diameter tungsten balls, the heaviest, basically tiny little bird shot that we could find that is strong with a more traditional, but slightly shorter, bumper inserted in the back like your traditional buffer. Um, this is a specialty material. The balls are expensive. Powder is also good, but a real pain in the butt to do at a production level and it's not nearly as clean, it tends to cake and clump and be turned into a solid block. So we like the maraca. The tungsten balls are very similar to the lead balls that are inside your dead blow hammer and they do the same job. So instead of a timing, secondary impact, it's more of a dead blow hammer thunk to mitigate the bounce. Uh, so in summary, the two piece carrier system allows us to configure the ass in to mitigate bolt bounce in 5.56. It also makes for a better 300 blackout. So you'll see this system migrate into our 300 blackout system as well. Uh, in addition to those things, a short barreled 5.56 is inherently difficult to make because of the uh, short distance after the gas port or short dwell time after gas port that we um, got around a couple of different ways but primarily we have a strengthened gas block it works on the same principle as ours does before and we're running one in five barrels the tight twist barrels let us eat a little bit extra energy in the bore um, along with we get more stability on heavier rounds with a shorter barrel and we're able to shorten the barrel even more than standard to a 9.69 inches. Okay, so results. Uh, the g design has been tested pretty profusely now. Uh, 556, we basically decided has to run for a long time and has to run over a lot of ammo. So that's what's expected by the market. So we tested it that way. A lot of different ammo specs, all the way from a 55 grain 223 unsuppressed up through M855 suppressed throughout a range of function and endurance, uh, particularly uh, 10,000 plus rounds on a single rifle with no breakages along with um, reliability at a, at a level we found acceptable, which is actually great. Very, very few malfunctions through that 10,000 round test. And uh, along with that, we're testing accuracy we, as we go along. We take a baseline rate of fire in full auto. We take an end of test uh, repeat of all those. 
Um, these 9.69 inch barrels tend to hold about 2200 feet per second with the M193 round. Surprisingly high, uh, at least I thought so with such a short barrel. The one in fives um, shoot very well. We test accuracy generally with the 69 grain gold metal match that shoots very well in these rifles. I mean, sometimes down to an inch in 9.69 inch guns, which is impressive considering the guns are very difficult to shoot accuracy with as they're very, very small. Rates of fire, uh, very comfortable ranges um, in the high 700s to mid 900s, but depending on the configuration and whether you're running suppressed or not. And good reliability in full auto, which basically proves your bolt bounce issues are mitigated enough, um, well beyond any limit in semi-auto. Um, that's basically what we found. We ended up, we have a gun that works even better than we thought it would, uh, being that the short barrel guns can be a challenge, along with the extra driven mass, the um, larger diameter spring, and bumper system make the gun extremely smooth to shoot and actually quite enjoyable. So it's always a challenge to bring a product to market with this that is close to this many edges of uh, functional reliability, but uh, we pulled it off with not a small amount of work. Um, a considerable amount of shooting and testing and effort, a lot of dollars went into developing this product. It may seem like, oh, they just made a 5.56 upper for a honey badger, but far more complicated than that. Um, but super proud of the product. It's extremely reliable. It's really, really awesome to shoot, and I'm sure you're gonna like it. It's like a five pound Mark 18, but shorter. <laughs> um, and you're gonna see them on the market before the end of 2023. Full disclosure, when you first saw it, I'm like, sweet, just what the world needs. Another short 556 that is probably gonna be like questionably reliable. By way of example, Mark 18, where you have a 10-3 barrel and yeah, you deal with the thing, kind of trying to beat itself to death when it's overgassed as far as putting a can on there, like issues because of dwell time and other stuff. So when I saw this thing with a 9.69 inch barrel, same gas system, carbine length, I'm just like, whew. Like I'm listening to the words you're saying, I'm just holding out some reservations. But coming away from firing that thing, it's incredible. And I think that's one of the things I appreciate. Like on the one hand, if you need a short 5.56, five, like, yep, five pounds, bam, there you go. And work suppressed, unsuppressed, like things amazing. And that is the part that is actually exciting for me. Like I just like all the cool engineering nerd stuff. And the fact that they were able to do that, I think that's incredible. Basically by reworking the bolt carrier group and essentially adding a mass to it. Furthermore, figuring out like, hey, what do we need to add? Like maybe this material work, maybe this. And like narrowing that down to where, yeah, there's no, like there's no buffer now. And the thing runs like a champ, both shooting suppressed as well as shooting unsuppressed to include full auto, which that was a big one. Like. When they first came out with the Honey Badger, they ended up with, I think it's a 16 inch, like 5.6 version. I think they made maybe 50 of them. Reason being is because of bolt bounce and like gassing something for 300 blackout versus 5.56, wildly different. And that was like a really hard nut to crack and they figured it out and figured it out really well too. Being able to shoot something full auto, like if there's any bolt bounce, like it won't. And to do it in that small of a package, incredible. Honestly, really excited to eventually get my hands on one of those and put in a bunch of time with it and eventually bring you guys a full review, but pretty neat little feat of engineering right there. And as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.
quit ruining my audio, squirrel.